So I had a patient this morning and, um, you know, father, military member, just been serving the armed forces here in Clarksville, Tennessee for uh, a long time. And because of some injuries to his lower back, uh, he was told by medical physicians um, that he would never be able to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, one of the things that he brought up this morning was um, he knows I love I love being out in the wilderness. I love being out in the wild. I love going hunting, fishing, hiking, backpacking, things like that. So he loves to do those things, and he's been doing those things all of his life. So he had a friend approach him wanting to know if he would be able to go to Alaska and go like on one of those amazing hunts. You know, if if you know anything about hunting and being out in the wilderness, you know that like. I could literally live in Alaska. My wife, not so much. She wants a beach. I'm like, babe, but there's a beach in Alaska. I mean, it might be a little cold, but there's a beach. And occasionally you got to watch out for the, uh, you know, when the salmon are there, you got to watch out for the grizzly bears. But there's a beach. It'll be awesome. No, she doesn't want to move to Alaska. I can't. Man, Alaska would be amazing. You know, get away from all the craziness and the masks. I'm pretty sure people in Alaska aren't wearing masks. But anyways... So here's the gist. This young man who really has, you know, more than half of his life ahead of him has been told by medical physicians that he's never going to be able to do that type of thing, to be able to backpack in and out 100 pounds of caribou meat or grizzly bear meat or whatever he goes up there and hunts. So, and guys, he's an ethical hunter. He would take it. He would eat all of it, provides for his family his friends, that type of thing. So don't give me any bad comments. If you do, I just won't read them. But here we go. I asked him, whose perspective is that? And why do you think the medical community often will tell patients that you'll never be able to do X, Y, or Z again? You'll never be able to do that. When I have countless patients in my clinic, and I'm just kind of simply talking about spinal problems right now. We have many, I mean, my wife was told she'd never be able to have kids. That was the medical community's perspective on her health. They thought she'd never be able to because she had a problem. Then she had one of their procedures, an ablation procedure, back when she was like 16 years old. And at 16 years old, she was told, you'll never be able to have children. Well, we got three. So I'm pretty sure she can. So in this guy's situation, the reason medical physicians will say that is because the way they assess people and the way they their perspective, the way they view people, is they view it from a medical mindset. See, medicine, medical physicians are often taught. Now, I've got medical friends that know the truth. They know people can heal. That's why they send them to me. They send patients to me to heal, to get off of medications, to reverse their diabetes, to become fertile, so that them and their husband can actually have children. Folks, the reason though most medical physicians will say such junk to individuals like this young man is because their perspective is, and what they're taught in school oftentimes, is that once you diagnose somebody with, let's say, diabetes or a major back problem or infertility, sorry, that's you. You are defined by your diagnosis. And it's never going away. They, their perspective is that once you've got a bad back, you've always got a bad back. Because medicine doesn't do anything to correct. All they do is treat with drugs. Now, there are some amazing physical therapists out there that could definitely help people with shoulder problems, hip problems, knee problems, ankle problems. You know, I'm mentioning a lot of extremities because I kind of like to say, hey, leave the spine up to the experts. Leave it up to the chiropractors that have been shown to drastically increase the results, the rate of results in spinal problems over even physical therapists. But I love to integrate my practice, work together with physical therapy. I have my patients do exercises before and after their adjustments. And when they ask about physical therapy, I'm like, absolutely. And I'd love to get on the phone with that physical therapist 
and make sure they know the structure and alignment of your spine and what exercises we're having you do so they can further strengthen the muscles that need to be strengthened to stretch the ones that need to be stretched and balance things out from a structural standpoint in terms of your spine. But again, the entire perspective that medicine and medical physicians oftentimes have is that once you have that problem, we will treat the symptoms and you'll always have that problem. Thus, you need to change your environment. You need to change. You need to wear a mask, change your environment. Don't change your physical, immunological physiology so that you don't have severe illness from an infection. Don't change the structure and alignment of your back once you've injured it. Remobilize those fixated joints. Reduce that scar tissue buildup remobilize and restore mechanical mobility of the pelvis and spine so that you can do the things you used to be able to do before the injury. Instead, they say, what's your pain level? Here, let me give you a drug. You've got a problem for the rest of your life. And don't do any of this cool, fun stuff that you'd love to do and experience the world around you. Because from our perspective, you're broke and there's no way to fix you. And I said, that's the wrong perspective. But their perspective is why they told you you would never be able to do that again. I said, you work with me? He said, I've got one year. We want to go next year. I said, awesome. What's the date? When are we going? Because I want to go too. I was like, "There's, I'm absolutely, like, I'm dead serious. I'm like, dude, if you go to Alaska and we get you to a point where you can go to Alaska, you know what? I would love to go too. So trust me, your goal is literally my goal. You don't go, I don't go. I think that's a fair trade-off, right? And think of the, the effort a physician's going to put into the work they do for somebody in that scenario. You know what? I am dead set that this man is going to go on an Alaskan hunting trip and be able to pack out hundreds of pounds on his back. I know it. There's not a shadow of doubt in my mind. Because of the drastic improvements he's already had in my clinic. You know what? He's even like, maybe even go back to flying again. That would be awesome. But again, if he's only working, if he had only ever worked. Think about how many people are out there right now in this world. Who are working with doctors who say you can't. You'll never be able to. And my heart breaks for the people that do have serious conditions, that their injuries are so great. You know, there are people that go through car accidents and have severed spinal cords. And you know what? It breaks my heart. I'm not saying I can restore every single human being that ever walks through my office to be able to do whatever they ever wanted to do. But in situations like this, which is the vast majority, how many people are being told they can't? They'll never be able to. Or how many people are being told, there's nothing we can do to help you. I hear that a lot with cancer patients. People diagnosed with cancer told, there's nothing we can do to help you. You've got stage four metastatic cancer. Chemotherapy doesn't work anymore. And that's it. The doctor's being honest with you. Nothing we can do. That's when you walk out of the office and you go find somebody who says they can you never go back to people who say you can't. Again, there are limitations of matter in this world at times that many of us and many of our lives are somewhat bound by. But for the vast majority of people, there's a whole lot you can do to extend the quality of life, improve the quality of life, improve your functional capacity, improve your fertility, improve the structure and alignment of your back so that you can pack out 100 pounds. And I even talked to him briefly. I'm like, well, here's the thing is most people pack it all on your back. Why don't you pack some on your front, some on your back, so you're even out. You don't have to lean forward and then destroy your back on the several mile hike through the mountains to get back to camp. You know what? If you did that, it's going to serve you a whole lot better. Stop packing it all on your back. Even it out. It's going to do you a whole lot better. So again, the perspective is from medicine is we'll treat symptoms. You're always going to have this diagnosis. You're always going to be infertile. You're always going to be a diabetic. You're always going to be a back problem. And we'll treat all the symptoms with our drugs. Or we'll just tell you, sorry, you just can't and you never will. But that's their perspective because what they do, the way they come up with their stats and statistics and their 
mindset is by watching people who don't go to chiropractors, don't go to wellness way docs, who say pretty much for the vast majority, where there's a will, there's a way. You just need the right testing. You need the right processes. You don't treat symptoms. You treat underlying factors that are contributing to the cause of the problem. And when you do that, restoration can occur. We start fixing his back. He can. If he'd stayed in the medical model under their perspective, under their guidance, it's not even guidance, they're drug dealers. That's really half the time all a medical physician is, is a drug dealer. I always like to say I'm the doctor your dealer doesn't want you to see. So, y'all, I just hope this is just kind of, you know, I just, it was like, man, it's so sad that people literally, hey, Carla, what's up? It's just so sad that so many people literally live their lives and do nothing but go to physicians who say they can't do something. And I'm like, man, I could not imagine. Break my heart not to have the enjoyment that I can have in the future with my son and my family and my wife and my two little girls doing that stuff. You know, I mean, I said, so true. I hit my brainstem in a car accident. They didn't even think I would even come out of a coma. Here I am. Way to conquer that, Alice. Awesome. Morning from Texas. Appreciate you, Pamela. I wish you had a practice in Ohio. I see you're from here. Uh, we need a good doc here. Tammy, Tammy, trust me, the Wellness Way and the Wellness Way docs, you may have somebody closer to you. If you ever have things that aren't just solely and specifically structural and spinal, we can do health coaching online. We can do health coaching via phone consultation. We can do we can mail you kits for proper testing. You get it done at a local lab, blood draw location, and then you can get the results. And I'll help guide you in a way to correcting the underlying factors that are contributing to your condition. So I can still help you, even if you're from Ohio, but yep, that's where I grew up, born and raised. So trust me, there's a lot of people I wish I could be able to help up there with more than just, you know, coaching. But hey, I got people that travel in to town and spend a week or two here and get intensive corrective work on their spine and return home a whole lot better. I've got patients that send me x-rays and I do analysis for exercises to incorporate with chiropractic care that they're getting in their hometown. These are all things that I can help you with. Because, hey, if you've got a will and you've got a desire to do something, you know what? We're going to look at all the factors that are keeping you from being able to achieve that goal. And we look at that factors and we start checking off and we say, we can, we can take care of that factor. We can take care of this factor. Sometimes certain factors, you're not going to get away from, you know, and that's not as simple as like a broken bone or a, a, a severed spinal cord or something crazy. Um, but sometimes it's like, you know what? You need the job right now. You need that income, but it's stressing you out like crazy and your stress hormones are through the roof. And because your stress hormones are through the roof, that's why you can't become pregnant. And stress is a major factor in infertility. And sometimes it's a protective mechanism. That's one of the, and, and just kind of off, on a tangent here, but I think about it, I'm like, I wish more women would understand that sometimes when you can't become pregnant, it's actually one, God looking out for you. Every child is a blessing from God, but sometimes your health and your life, God doesn't want to see you hurt, harmed. He doesn't want to see a child come into this world sick and having health problems. The medical world thinks, hey, let's just force a pregnancy upon the person. Let's not look at why they're not becoming pregnant. What factors are contributing to the environment that isn't accepting pregnancy? Instead, let's just try and force it upon them. Why do you think neurological health problems and serious illnesses are at far higher rates in children born in that manner? Because they're not looking at the stress factors. They're contributing to the poor health of the individuals trying to become pregnant, whether it be the woman or even the man sometimes. So if you remove that stress, it's the best environment for you and the baby to be in while you're pregnant and when you give birth to bring a healthy baby 
and maintain a healthy mother. So those are some thoughts. Love you all. Appreciate you all. I got to go into consultation. We'll see you all later. Make sure you share this, please. Especially if somebody's been told they can't. All right. I think hope is always something that has significant value to anybody's life. And a lot of times people are having hope taken from them because of medicine. Love y'all.